Robbie Ferguson looks sad. What's the matter, Robbie? Ah, he misses his friend. Rachel Zhu has been gone for a very long time. The tears of a bald nerd carry magical powers. As a tear interacts with the ink on a page, something truly magnificent occurs. For from thin air, Rachel Zhu appears. Delight and utter joy fills the heart of both beauty and geek as they frolic along the path toward one another. But what's this? Rachel Zhu is not the lovely redhead you might suppose, but is indeed a hideous monster. <sighs> Poor Robbie is frightened. Don't eat me, he cries out. But his plea for mercy falls upon deaf ears. With a single gulp, the monstrous Rachel Zhu has her fill. Geeks and nerdlings beware. Don't cry over the time Rachel Zhu has been gone. For if you do, your tears may bring about a fate as terrible as Robbie's. Rather, rejoice in the fact that she has returned to us and is for now satisfied and unhungry. For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux and other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Episode number 287 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, March the 19th, 2013. Hello, Rachel Shu. Hello, everyone. Nice how, to be back. How are you doing? Well, not really see you all, but chat with you. Yeah, we're in the chat room. Yeah. Category 5 on Freenode if you want to join us. How you been? I've been good. How about you? Pretty good. Yeah. Scary intro. Yeah, I gotta watch out. I just might unzip all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, we've got an excellent show for you tonight. Bogdan Oros, you remember him? Uh, he was on the show uh, a little while back. He's back again tonight. Going to be talking to us about how we can use technology through mobile devices, uh, QR scan codes, and all that kind of stuff to enhance our customer interaction experience. If we're business owners or work in a business and you want to increase your ability to communicate with your customers, this is the ultimate technological. Hey, what do you think of the service? Stick around. We're going to be talking to Bogdan about how that works. Rachel, what All do you right. got coming up tonight? Coming up in the newsroom, Google is shutting down Reader this summer. Uh, Microsoft's Outlook and Hotmail outage was due to an overheating data center. Yikes. And buy SimCity and get a second game free to play while you wait for SimCity to connect. <laughs> and the Google Street View data collection fiasco has finally been settled. So stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. Awesome. Hey, don't forget about our mobile website. We're talking all about these kinds of things tonight. Scan codes and stuff. There's one. Scan that QR code with your mobile device. You'll be able to check out the Category 5 mobile site. Uh, also... Uh, we want to say hello to our new viewers this uh, this week and over the past couple of weeks. Introduce some really cool new features on the website. Um, some of you, if you've registered for it, you will have received the notification just before the show tonight uh, just to let you know that, hey, the show's coming. Don't forget, click here to watch. Uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I want to say hello to BL Biedback. I hope that I pronounced that even close to right. JROM5, Elizabeth, Vanwell, uh, Pierre Mori7, Good Child, uh, Akshar Communications. Nice to have you joining us. Mike Scott, C Davis underscore. 
And we got Steve O underscore sixty five fourteen, Bill forty six seventy seven, Eric Andrews, Mike Dash eight no G eight K M R. Who you guys? And Flash sixty six. Nice to have these new viewers uh, just registered on our website, category five dot TV. It's free to register on our website, and you'll get uh, you'll get to subscribe to things like being able to receive the email once a week. Are you making faces at them? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. You know. Well, I'm just sitting here and you're talking, so I've got to do something. <laughs> Check it out, Category5.tv. Bogdano Ross is standing by. We're going to take a really quick break and then talk to him about TXT feedback. Don't go anywhere. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. As I was mentioning just before the break, Bogdan Oros joins us uh, from Romania. Nice to have you here once again, Bogdan. Hi, hi, Robbie. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me. So good to see you. Uh, Bogdan is here to talk about his new product, txtfeedback.net, tonight. I encourage you to check that out. And uh, Bogdan, first question is, what is TXT Feedback? Uh, TXT Feedback is a platform uh, which engages uh, customers in conversations together with companies. If you're a retail store, a restaurant, or a coffee shop, yeah. on, a, on a couple of occasions, customers might go in your store and they might have either some feedback for you or they might want to buy some product for you. And there's no actually an easy way for your, uh, for the customer to uh, signal this information to the company. Right. And how they can do this right now is that they can see some posters throughout the uh, restaurant, coffee shops, retail store. They see some posters where they can uh, scan a QR code mm -hmm. or send an SMS to a mobile phone number. And that SMS or the message which, uh, which is being sent by the customer will get to the, to the company and the company has the possibility of replying. Okay, so I go into a restaurant, not too pleased with the service that I'm receiving. Maybe the food's all right, yes. but somebody's not treating me well at the restaurant. They might have a TXT feedback, what, QR code or some yes. way for me to yeah. use yeah. my yeah, mobile. Yeah, they might have some. Uh, so then what happens at that point? Well, at that point, whenever you can scan the QR code, it's going to direct you to a mobile website. Yeah. For instance, if we could, uh, if we could, uh, could try it a little bit with, uh, uh, with one of your devices. Yeah, you can I'm just do go that. to a. Sure. You want us to bring up a QR code right here on the air? Folks, get your, uh, yeah, get your devices ready. Here we go. All right, so this is uh, this is our QR code. I'm gonna actually bring okay. up I'm gonna bring up my tablet here. This is fun. All right, <laughs> we're gonna bring up the QR Droid app, which is just a QR code scanner. It's free. It's available in in the Google Play Store. Uh, of course, on uh, on your iPhone, there are apps there as well. On my iPod Touch, I use. Uh, Another QR code scanner. Let's see what I use on there. It, pretty much anything. You I can, use just simply called if you scan. don't If you don't have a QR code scanner, you can just type uh, the small address in uh, in the browser. Right. So that's also very easy to use. Okay. So let's let's actually try this and see what happens when we scan that. And folks, you can do the same. I'm just going to hold up my my tablet here. I'm going to hit scan. Oh, there we go. Rachel Shu can see that. And there we go. We got a beep. And now, Bogdan, what I'm greeted with is a screen that says, Welcome to Retail Business Store 1. Let's see if yes. I can get you back up on the screen here. There we go. So you at home can see. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So it looks very much like a, like a chat window or something along those lines. Yes. And you can write there exactly what's your complaint. For instance, some, I don't know, something with the coffee or some certain product yep. which you okay. didn't like. All right, so we're going to say here, now what, what is actually, what is it that I'm connected to? What is it that I'm doing here? I'm going to say, I, uh, this guy, referring to the cashier, uh, the person selling me the coffee here, uh, was really rude. It's yeah. funny because I, I see this 
kind of you know people experiencing this and not being able to do anything about it where you're in a shop uh, and yeah, twice it, 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 twice in the past two weeks Bogdan I'll, I'll tell you here's here are some use cases one I was I was in the grocery store waiting in line and somebody was huffing and puffing and they're like she is so rude they had no way to report that to the to the management or anything like that of course she's not going to report it to her boss uh, and mm-hmm. then in another place a restaurant uh, the people left in kind of a huffy fit and, and said, I'm never going back there. Don't ever go in there. And I'm just a bystander walking by on the street kind of thing. And us Canadians, we're supposed to be really friendly. So you know something happened that was, was quite offensive. So this guy yeah. was really rude. So here's an opportunity. If, if the management subscribes to this service, that they would be able, they would be able to communicate that to the powers that be at the business. Now, I see something here that says, our staff is currently busy. Please wait for about two minutes. So what's actually happening here behind the scenes, Bogdan? So behind the scenes, what's happening is uh, if you, as a customer, you send a complaint and nobody uh, asks you in a certain uh, small interval, which can be defined, of course, by the companies, Yeah. then uh, we just get an automatic reply on the mobile website. And okay. after that, for instance, right now, I've just uh, send you a, a message. For oh. instance, we can uh, the company can uh, can give, of course, can reply to the customer, and they can also give them something like discount codes or something like that. Just sure. that it's uh, or maybe like a, I'll be right different. there to deal with this situation. I see. Now I see your reply here. We're sorry about the problem. Is there some way that I can see the uh, like you, what you actually see? Can we bring that up? Uh, on the yes. If you can uh, there we go. Okay. log into my screen right now, yeah. Yeah. So that's what you, you see. see. So, so if I complain here on my tablet, so I've got my tablet, yes. I'm, I'm in your store. It could be a, a mobile yeah. device. It could be your cell phone. And say, so rude. Or maybe I want a compliment. Maybe I want to say, you know, this, is, this guy's been good. Yeah. There we go. There's my message on Bogdan's screen. Yeah. And you are not even at the same location as us. You yes. remind the viewers where you are physically, geographically located so right now. So physically, I'm actually, I'm actually physically in Bulgaria. I'm not even in Romania. Oh right yeah, now. very I good. I told you I'll be in Romania. I should have been, but I'm actually in Bulgaria. Um, but so the the thing that the way the solution works is that as a manager, let's say of a restaurant, or yeah. as a manager, uh, as an owner of I don't know, you have maybe one to three restaurants. Sure. You have the possibility of just logging in this interface and seeing all the messages that you receive on each of your locations. Okay. Okay, and you can also reply to them, or maybe somebody from your staff can see uh, the messages. They can reply to them, and later yeah. you, as a manager, can just go to the report section and see what kind of things people are uh, are complaining about. What are the positive, the negative feedback that you can receive? Yeah. Is is so there any way, you know, what what happens then? You know, once we've had this, what looks like a chat with, like a one-on-one chat with management at yeah. the store, perhaps this could be used for support. I had the thought that maybe I'm standing in a store and, you know, I, it happens all the time. You're in a big box store and you cannot find a salesperson. And it's like, where yeah. on earth? You know, you look and you are in the middle of, uh, what was it called? Um <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you're just in Najarnia. That's the reference I'm thinking yeah. of. You're in the middle of Najarnia. If you get the reference, I love you. Uh, and it's just store, at, you know, you're just looking down the aisles. And where, so, okay, wouldn't it be nice to be able to say, okay, where on earth do I find the toilet paper? Yeah. And have somebody yeah. be able to respond back. So, what happens after this conversation is done? Does it just disappear? Is there some kind of archive that management can look back no, over? Yeah. Yeah, actually, the conversation is always being uh, being logged. So at okay. any point in time, when your customers are gonna see are gonna come again, yeah, they're gonna give you I don't know additional feedback or additional question. You're all, always going to see uh, all the all the conversation. Wow. A really good thing for businesses is that, for instance, you go to the retail store and you want to buy certain product which is not there. For instance, it's out of okay. stock. Okay. Something that's out and of you, stock. Yeah. And you complain about this to somebody like the management. Later, you have the possibility when the management uh, and when the company is going to bring that product, they can send you an SMS and they, they will inform you, hey, Robbie, we got you the cool iPad that you wanted. Sorry, we didn't have you when you came by the last time. Really? So it's also a new, yeah, it's a new way of interacting actually with the customer where you can give the customer information in real time. Okay, so do I have to be at the store to receive that message? Like, is no, it next time no. I go in? No, no, you don't need to be at the store. Wow. Okay, so business owner. 
um, let's say I'm a business owner or, you know, I think that this could also be integrated into education system, you know, like a school or something. Yeah. If you want to communicate yeah. with uh, with the higher up staff, say the principal or whatever it is, the dean, yeah. um, be able to actually do that through a devi- uh, service like this. What do I need to actually install at my business or at my educational facility? What is there an appliance? Is there some kind of uh, server that I have to acquire, or what's what's involved? But the in the very the very nice thing about this uh, application is the fact that you don't need to install anything. This is actually software as a service. So the oh, only fantastic. thing that you that you need is uh, from our side, you just get username and uh, password yep. from an account that we set up for you. Mm-hmm. You're going to get from us posters uh, and also QR codes and mobile website and phone numbers, virtual phone numbers for you to put in your store. Depending on the number of stores, of course, we can also give you one phone number for each store or, and one uh, mobile really? website for each store. Okay, so if I'm use- so we're looking at this as an app, like scan a QR code, uh, it's kind of, kind yeah. of like a, a website. You're saying you also get the SMS ability that someone can just text you and it becomes yes, exactly. a, an SMS communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how it's actually led the name of it. It's actually text feedback. So we started right. as uh, offering SMS as a possibility for customers to engage with businesses. Yeah. And we also, of course, we offer this possibility. So the solution I was telling you about earlier is also based on SMS. You go, you want a certain product, the product maybe is not there. And yep. then the business can have the possibility of sending you an SMS and it will inform you of the fact that now they have the product in the stock and you can come and, uh, and get it. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I welcome people who are in the chat room. If you'd like to ask Bogdan a question, feel free to, to put it to Rachel's attention, and she'll pass that along. Rachel, if you could do that. Uh, just interrupt anything that I'm saying, which is not out of the ordinary for you, so that's, that's okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Bogdan, how can we uh, subscribe to this service? How can we uh, get this for our business? And also, of course, the bottom line is how much does it cost? What is this going to run? Yeah, it's quite simple. Uh, the way to subscribe it, you just go on our website on txtfeedback.net. It's a sign up button. And basically, our uh, rates, depending on what you, on the number of stores, they start from uh, from 25 USD per month. Oh, so wow. So the, the business is, yeah, per month. Yeah, and in this, uh, in this money, you also have a certain number of SMSs and also uh, mm-hmm. you also receive virtual phone number and all the other information that I told you about earlier mobile website, QR code, and everything. Wow. So the red, the service pretty much ready to go. You just need to log in, see the feedback the customers send you, put the posters in the store, and also mm-hmm. then see the feedback and reply to to the to the information received by the customers. Very good. Oh, this could be used for it. like so many different things. I can think contests. You know, you want to run a contest in your store, and you know, here find the QR code and scan it, and tell us where you're located, and we'll we'll come and bring you your prize or so. You know, the real fun kind of ways. And then there's also yeah. the yeah. the real this interactive. It's better than dropping your comments in a box and then you never know whether, do, do they read them? Are they ever going to do anything about it? Here's an opportunity for you to actually be there, standing there and communicating with somebody one-on-one. Uh, yeah. I think that's awesome. What a, what a great concept. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly the, the strength of the, of the solution. <clears throat> it, uh, it's the one-on-one real-time communication that, uh, that we offer for customers uh, and businesses as well to try to... Uh, link this, uh, this, this two uh, areas. Very good. All right, we're going to put that QR code right back up on the screen for you. If you'd like to scan it, give it a try. Uh, Bogdan is on yeah. the other end of the, uh, of the line there, and uh, he is acting as kind of the store manager for our, our bogus little store. I will be the up. store manager for Category 5 tonight. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Represent us, man. Represent. Yeah. TXTfeedback.net is where you want to go. Check it out, and uh, make sure you, you check that out tonight, and, and also scan that QR code just to see what it, uh, how it operates on your device. Bogdan, always a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thanks, thanks for the invite, Robbie. Yeah, thanks for I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be here. If any, anybody has any questions, they can just write it there, scan the QR code. I can reply very fast. Very good. Uh, any other way that, uh, that they can contact you, just straight through the website? Uh, website, you're going to find uh, our email address there. They're also going to find the phone number there. Any Excellent. Very accessible. Any, any, any solution like this should be, should be okay. Yeah, very good. All right, thanks, Bogdan. Thanks, thanks, Robbie. Have a great night. You do. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to have you here, and thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, Rachel. All right, so do you want to hear what's up in the news, everyone? I know this is your favorite part of the show. And we've got so many viewer questions coming up, so we're going to hit this early, and then we're just going to plow through your questions. The mailbag is full. So, Rachel Zhu, 
All righty. So I, I purposefully didn't put any news in about the cloud. Just yeah, so you know, I scanned okay? it ahead of time. Just, to just make in sure case. there was nothing hidden. Just want to be safe. No I clouds. Keep it serious. Cheese or gnomes. Keep it clean, folks. All righty. Google is going <laughs> to shut down its reader service in July. A petition to save the service, which aggregates news content from web feeds, had 25,000 signatures in just a few hours. Theories are that shutting down Reader is part of Google's plan to migrate more people to its social media service, Google+. Plus. Um, Google said in its official blog there are two simple reasons for this. Usage of Google Reader has declined, and as a company, we are pouring all of our energy into fewer products. It added users and developers who wanted to use alternatives could export their data, including their subscriptions, over the next four months using its Google Takeout service. Hmm. Um, Microsoft has blamed an overheating data center for a 16-hour shutdown of its Outlook and Hotmail systems. Isn't Outlook cloud-based now? Silence. <laughs> In a blog post, it said a rapid and substantial temperament <laughs> temperament spike, temperature spike, <laughs> had caused a large number of servers to stop working. I'm sensing a temperament spike. <laughs> Microsoft's Vice President Arthur DeHaan wrote that the temperature rise had been due to a fire firmware update failure. Microsoft is in the process of migrating millions of Hotmail users to the new Outlook.com service. <laughs> all right. And all you fans of SimCity, anyone who buys and registers the latest version of SimCity before the 26th of March can choose a free game from a selection offered by Electronic Arts. The free games available as digital downloads include recent releases, Mass Effect 3, Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies. Who comes up with these What things? is it called? Plants vs. Zombies. Plants vs. Zombies. Mm, huh. Who could win that one? And Bejeweled 3. <laughs> it's a gardening <laughs> game for zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Tilling the ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The move follows connection problems and glitches caused by EA's decision to make SimCity an online-only game. And finally, Google has agreed to pay a $7 million fine for collecting people's personal data without authorization as part of its Street View service. But uh, who gets the $7 million? I don't know. Not me. <sighs> That's like piddly change to them. Like, oh, good, we've settled this, finally. Seven million Here, have we made seven million in dollars. one minute. They sneeze, and they sneeze up <laughs> seven million dollars. <laughs> and the settlement with 38 U.S. states, they agreed to also destroy emails, passwords, and web history data, which was harvested from home wireless networks as street view cars photograph neighborhoods between 2008 and 2010. So if you want the full stories, go to category 5tv newsroom. The category 5tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category 5tv For the category 5tv newsroom, I'm Rachel Shu. It's not a race, Rachel. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm afraid of a cloud and i got to get through it. Isn't it scary to think that the, the Street View car could go through your neighborhood and record things like emails and bank statements and information from your computers through Wi-Fi signals? And, oh, folks, Wi-Fi is, like, so wide open when you, you know, you get a, a router or something and you plug it in at home thinking, okay, now I'm going to add Wi-Fi to my tablet and don't ever set up any security for it. And it's unbelievably unsecure. So, and that's, that's just proof. I mean, that they could actually drive through the neighborhood and record all this information that's private and that they have to pay $7 million uh, to, to be able to settle Google it. Google Maps. Caught Almost his for, brother ordering a hot dog is on Google, Google Maps. <laughs> Google. <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> Everybody go quick, register Google. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind of funny, too. All right, well, hey, tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric at Cordery Electric, uh, com. Also, Netflix, get your free trial at cat5.tv slash Netflix. And, of course, save yourself some money on your phone bill by completely eliminating it with NetTalk Duo, NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi line of products. Go to cat5.tv slash phone for more information and uh, link out to their uh, to their Canadian website as well. Check them out, folks. All right. 
We've got a, a slew of viewer questions. Before we get into that, I want to show you a couple of really neat things that uh, have been added to the website lately. Uh, really working hard to, to make, you know, add some value added stuff to category5.tv, make it as cool and easy to use as possible for you. So I'm actually going to bring it up on my screen here. Check it out. That's category5.tv during a live broadcast. What I wanted to show you this week is the new show notes feature, uh, which has been basically improved. It's an enhanced show notes timeline uh, playback. And when you go to the show notes for any episode, you'll see that uh, it carries with it all of the, the details of the episode. It starts playing the actual episode as well. For those who prefer Linux or are simply curious about Linux so there you and go. other open source technologies, this is Category 5 Technology TV. So let's pause that. And now I'm going to scroll down a little ways. You see chat logs. This is where you can follow through the, uh, the chat that happened during the show and see what was said. That can be interesting, especially if, uh, if viewers are providing some kind of you know, information in the chat room. That was a cool Unity bug, and everybody here saw it. <laughs> How cool was that? All right, let's see if I can get it back. Did you guys catch that? That was awesome. It just like everything kind of went crazy. This whole part will be edited out. Not really. Not really. We don't do that. I wish we could. There we go. It's back. Okay. So on this website, which I have paused, not only do you have the chat logs, but you've got uh, actually a little play button beside each of the major kind of points in time during the episode. If you want to watch the top stories, for example. So now if I push play on this episode, say on the top stories for from the Category 5.TV newsroom, hit play. And you see what happens is it actually jumps to that very segment. Because this is serious. This is very serious. It's intense. I'm going to pause that again. Scroll down a little ways. Say we want to start the feature about building a photo booth. So easy to find your spot in the video. Push play next to that. So Abigail, we started talking about building a photo booth just like that. For your wedding. So that's one of the cool new features on Category5.tv. It's, it's actually a feature that has been around for a while, uh, but, pardon me, greatly improved uh, over the past couple of weeks. So quite excited about that. Check out our website, Category5.tv. And, of course, the show notes are a great way to be able to follow, you know, figure out what happened in an episode. Somebody said to me, uh, what episode was it that you talked about activating the Compiz plugin, Enhanced Desktop Zoom? on Ubuntu 12.10, and I said, well, here you go. Just click on play right next to it in the show notes. I, I don't know if uh, some of you have already noticed. I see Chris Reich. Yeah, buddy. There you go. Um, and it just starts right at that, at that point in the episode. So category5.tv, check it out. That is our official website. Make sure you sign up as a registered viewer, and that will give you access to some of the cool free features that uh, are unavailable to people who are not registered. Check it out. All righty. All right. Ready for some viewer questions? Yep. Note that you can push that little play button over there if you're looking at the, uh, or I guess it's down there, down there. Push that little play button next to viewer questions, and it'll start right here. Who are you talking to? To, to them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking you, about you, your life. We're, we're, we're on the air, Rachel. <laughs> Just so you know. All righty. She has been away for a while, folks, so <laughs> give her that. All right? Give her that. <laughs> all righty. So for questions, we have one from Pyro Rocks This World. Pyrus Rock. Hey, buddy. Oh, <laughs> Pyro's Rocks This World. All right. Yeah. So, Robbie, just a quick question yeah. and some background in all relation right. to the desktop Zoom, which you covered last episode. Hmm. Mom is vision impaired and requires Zoom on her computer. She currently uses her Mac, which has excellent Zoom. Okay. But whenever she uses another computer in the house, she finds it impossible to get close enough to see. Ah. So, with the desktop Zoom that you covered, is there a way to get the Zoom to only move around the desktop when the mouse hits the edges and not follow the mouse, as it can be rather hard mm. to keep track of a spreadsheet if everything keeps moving when you go to select a new cell? Right, I hear you. Yeah. Is that the end of the email? Other than before I actually start answering. Thanks, Robbie. Love the show. All right, cheers. Don't leave that part out. That's the <laughs> best. That's the meat of the question. You are brilliant, Robbie. Thank you, Pyrus Rock. <laughs> this world. <laughs> All right. So yes, um, let's take a look. 
here I am in Ubuntu with uh, Unity and all that. And last week on episode number uh, 286, I showed you how to activate enhanced desktop zoom on Ubuntu 12.10. So tonight, for you, for you and for your mum, Pyrus Rock, uh, we're going to show you how to do this. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go right back into what we were doing last week during that feature. We're going to go into Compiz Config Settings Manager. Okay, and we're going to take things a little bit further. And, and folks, I'm going to show you what Pyrus Rock is talking about. If I zoom in here, it's fantastic for accessibility. But now if I move, move the mouse, it's actually moving around on the screen, which to me is pretty handy for, for this use case, the show, because when I move around the mouse, it actually follows it kind of like a camera. But for accessibility purposes, it can be a little bit annoying. So let's take this a little bit further and make this more of an accessibility feature for your mom and for anyone else out there who has you know, a, a vision issue that you know, it's easier to see something when it's larger on the screen. The fact is, is that today's computer monitors, they're high resolution, and so everything, you think, okay, well, I'll get a big screen because my eyesight is bad, but actually everything is now smaller because it's higher resolution. So how does that work? It's kind of backwards. So here's an opportunity for you to fix that by using the enhanced desktop zoom. So we're going to do a search in the filter field here for Zoom. And you'll see that plugin, which we previously activated on episode number 286. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure you click and, uh, and actually watch that feature first so that you can get as far as we are so far. So watch this. I'm going to go up to Zoom Area Movement up at the top here. And within that, you see a, a drop down here called Fitting. And in Fitting, there's an option to Fit Zoomed Area to Window. So one thing that we're going to do is we're going to enable that. So click that and turn on Enable. And now we want to actually grab a key combination which is going to program this particular portion of the plugin to a particular key combination. So I'm going to click it and then I'm going to hit, hit you know, I can make something up. I'm going to go Control-Shift-K because I know that that's not one that I currently have assigned to anything. So I'm going to hit OK. And now here's a little trick for you uncheck and en enable enhanced zoom desktop wait for about two seconds because it does that and then check it off again now what that's done is it's basically refresh the settings of comp is and your enhanced desktop zoom now features fit zoomed area to window so I'm going to show you what that does here I'm going to bring up uh, a small window let's use something like the calculator there we go okay so there it is with the calculator active I'm now going to hit control shift K. And there we go. The calculator is now filling my entire screen. So on a 22 inch monitor, that is literally, you know, like 12, 15, 20 inches high, whatever it is. So now to zoom out, I'm going to use my Windows button and the down scroll wheel, which we programmed in during the last episode. So I can move this anywhere on the screen and I can hit Control Shift K and it automatically pans and zooms directly into that particular application. Now here's something that's going to annoy your mum, Pyrus Rock, because as you move your mouse, look what happens. Oh, well that didn't solve anything. I can push the numbers, but I have to move up here to see them. I can do that, but then I've got to move up here to see them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll out. I'm going to move this aside just so that it's out of the way. And we're going to go up to Mouse Behavior. We're going to change things a little bit. We're going to change our zoom mode from sync mouse, which is what's causing it to follow, to pan area. Once I've changed that, uncheck and enable enhance zoom desktop, recheck it. There we go. Now let's go back to our calculator. Control Shift K. There we are. Now I'm going to move my mouse. Watch what happens. Look at that. Now you see that as I touch the edge of the screen, I can in fact move the screen. I can nudge it. And I think that is much more what you're looking for for your mom, Pyrus Rock. There you go. Now do you notice there that I have a big mouse and I have a small mouse cursor? One of them's real, one of them's not because I'm zoomed in. So the little one that you're seeing is actually not going to do anything for me. It's actually just a little bit of an annoyance. So I'm going to scroll out again. And let's turn on hide original mouse pointer okay now you see that I actually have that checked off but I can see it because uh, let's see here and that has to do with the way that we are actually capturing the video tonight 
So for you, if you have that same kind of thing, which you do see on the screen there, but in fact, I don't see it on my screen. Rachel, you can confirm that on my screen there isn't a second mouse cursor, right? Mm -hmm. So for those of you watching at home, you can see that, but that is how you would uh, actually turn that off. And that's because it's actually scaling the mouse pointer. See that? Scale the mouse pointer. And so it actually makes it bigger as I zoom in. So check that out. Really nice and simple. Control Shift K is what I set it to. Pirates Rock This World. Make sure you let us know how that works and if that's uh, if that's done a good job for for your mom. All right. Thanks so much for the question. Yep. And uh, we got more. Excellent. So here is one from JP. Hey JP. Um, I downloaded Mint 1432 bit. Can I over install it over it with like the 64 bit or other distro? Oh, hmm. I dual boot with Windows 7. Okay, yeah, you can. Um, you've got to be real careful in, in doing such a thing because you need to know where your partitions are and things like that. Now, as you go to install Mint, Mint may ask you, and, and give this a go, launch the, uh, the installer, and the installer will, will see that there is a previous installation of Mint, and it will give you the option to either run it alongside of that and Windows, or would you like to actually replace Mint, Mint uh, 64-bit? So you could say replace, and it will it will go in and, and not touch your Windows partition, um, but it will then reinstall. You can reinstall Grub, and then uh, <laughs> that was slow motion. <laughs> you can it will reinstall Grub, and it will detect your Windows partition, and everything will work just fine. Um, so of course that said, we're doing s some things here on the system that could you know they could be destructive make sure you back up everything on your existing mint partition and also i would suggest that you back up your your windows partition as well that's important because we wouldn't want to lose it just in case i bite <laughs> i hope Alrighty. that helps so yeah you can be careful so we have another one here that says hi robbie thanks I'm ray in need of registering <laughs> a domain and hosting what would you recommend for one professional hosting for a business with good email service and two personal website? I intend to use Joomla or another CMS for development. Best regards, Kevo. Okay, so Kevo for professional use, it's always a good idea to find a, a good reliable host. Um, you know, you might find somebody locally. You you want to be able to have support that is available to you so you know i work in a small firm i can give you the information to to purchase it even through us if you wanted to um the advantage to working with a, a like a local firm or at least a firm where you know that there are people that are operating the servers is that they are available to you if if something goes wrong not only that but you know that they're working on the problem if something goes wrong you don't want to have to worry about that kind of stuff uh, a professional hosting firm will be able to, you know, you can pick up the phone, you can reach them, and you can you can get a hold of them. Uh, but then there are um, shared hosting firms, which are completely legitimate too. So this is, you, you can also use it for business. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's harder to get support. It's harder for you to get uh, access to, you know, actually picking up the phone and reaching somebody with some of those companies uh, because of the fact that they are appealing to a different market. They're looking for people. They're looking for millions of customers at very very cheap prices and so they don't have time to deal with everybody versus the small company that is running a really good server service a, a hosted solution that is only focusing on a very small core group of customers you may pay a little bit more but you're getting more for it as far as service goes um, so there are advantages to each for shared hosting um, you can actually get a, a, a special, here's something, another advantage to being a registered viewer on our website, category5.tv, is that we have a section called coupons. And I'm going to actually show you that, Kevo. And I don't mind showing this uh, actually on the air, but uh, here we are. Okay, so I'm going to go members, coupons. Ah, oh, look at that. I've got to log in. Of course, it's the member section. Yes, I'm in. Okay, web hosting for only 70 bucks. For a whole year, you get a, a year of carbon neutral LAMP stack hosting on a Linux box. You get Linux, Apache, PHP, MySQL, Unlimited. You can get one free domain name registration, so that's great in and of itself because you need a domain name. 
unlimited storage for your website, a fifty dollar or a fifty gigabyte backup account. Who cares? Uh, but the unlimited storage for your website that's pretty awesome. You don't have to worry about space. Unlimited number of domains on your account at no extra charge. You only have the cost of registering the extra domains. That's a bonus. You get unlimited bandwidth, unlimited email accounts. The coupon is there for seventy bucks. You'll get that. Should I show them the coupon? Ah, oh, just because you asked, I'm going to show you the coupon. Cat5.tv/dreamhost. And during checkout, it's not obvious. Make sure you go in the checkout process. Enter the coupon code Cat5TV, and it's going to be only seventy bucks. That's a great deal. That's a cheap deal. But it's shared hosting. I mean, it, it goes down sometimes. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a bad service at all by any means, but you get what you pay for. It's, it's, that's the saying, and there's a reason that that's a cliche. Um, if you pay $70 for your hosting for an entire year, you, you just have a little bit more grace when something goes wrong. And to be honest, they've been pretty reliable. They host our website right now. I would love to get off of shared hosting because we have a huge amount of traffic on our website and sometimes that can be problem problematic um, you for your website may not have the kind of traffic that we have and so it may just work fine so there's a couple options for you anyways so but call me i'll hook you up okay then so we now have a question from john zim hey john zim and he <clears> said, this is an update to my previous question. I found a program right. that helps you change the color folders nice. via the right-click drop-down menu okay. in the Ubuntu Software Center. It is called Folder Color. It is a paid program Wait a minute. for $3 and well worth it for me. So it's not just a clever name? Color f Folder? It is called Folder Color. Folder Color. Folder color, <laughs> literally, is three bucks. <laughs> Look at that. Folder color. Change the folder's color. <laughs> that was some clever naming right there. Two ninety nine in the Ubuntu Software Center. Well, what? It's better than the other, like the gnome, the cheese, and the cloud. At least it's just hey, like, this is what it is. Folder nothing. color. We know what gnome is. We know what cheese is. We know what the cloud is. I still don't know what any of those are. I know what really? a real cloud is, what a block of cheese <laughs> That's why is, she laughs at it. Is. That's, like, That's why she laughs. Do, 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 do. She's reading a news story about the cloud, and she's like, Well, it's cloud? like, yeah, they released a cloud, and I'm like, all right. So anyway, <laughs> he says, she needs to read the manual, folks. <laughs> <laughs> he says, thanks for all the help. Yeah, man. And, okay, we'll move on to Roy Coretta. Hey, Roy. Dear Robbie, love your show. It is Thank refreshing you. to listen to people who know what they're talking about. <laughs> Wait, didn't we just have a discussion where we just established that I am just, she knows I have nothing just come about back. anything? <laughs> this was sent before She's I been came away, back. Roy. <laughs> All righty. So I had a question for Robbie regarding the Rickle Magic 802. Mm. Uh, the mini PC that we looked at. Yeah, three Rico lines magic, yeah. S mini PC. It's a three. I, I don't know if it's That's three. Roman numerals. Three, three or lines LLL. is generally three. <laughs> <laughs> three or LLL. 802, three S mini PC. Okay. I would like to know how to zoom in and out of images displayed on the screen, and how can I perform dynamic zooms on JPEGs? I try. Ah. Oops. I have a wireless mouse with a center wheel control and find that the <coughs> only way to zoom in is by clicking on the left mouse button and then click again yeah, to return please. to the original size of the Thank image. You. There's no dynamic zoom that allows me to zoom in and out at any magnification. Right. There's only one zoom magnification. I, I hear what you're saying, Roy. This is the Rico Magic device. It's a very, very small mini PC. We had it on the show a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, go over to our website, linuxtechshow.com, and look for the video under uh, Cool Devices and Reviews. You'll see the uh, Rico Magic. It's called the smallest computer in the world. And it literally is very, very tiny, but it's an Android device that plugs into your, your computer screen or your TV with HDMI input. Right. So the, the issue that... Ron, uh, Roy, pardon me, is running into is that uh, he doesn't have the ability to zoom in because what are you missing with your TV that you don't have with a tablet? Do I give you a second or do you want me just to tell you? You don't have pinch zoom. You don't have multi-touch, so you can't do that. With a tablet, you can go whoop and you can zoom right in on something and you can go like that and zoom out. Yeah, it's with a, good a mouse, thing you didn't ask me. I've never even heard of pinch zoom. 
Well, there it is. It's multi-touch zoom feature, right? So there's a couple of different things that you can do, Roy. And for those of you who are interested in that device or perhaps already picked one up, I'll show you a couple of different things. Really cool thing, best thing, is if you happen to have a tablet or an Android device, okay? You can install what's called the MK8023 Remote App. And it, in fact, searches for your Ricoh Magic device and your screen, now I'm holding a tablet, but it could be as small as your phone, your screen becomes a multi-touch mouse, essentially, for that device. So you set your phone down or your tablet down in front of you, and now it becomes your controller for the TV through the Ricoh Magic through Wi-Fi, completely wirelessly. That is the ultimate, because then you do get the ability to have um, multi-touch and the ability to pinch zoom just like you normally would with a tablet but you have to have an Android device. So if you don't have that, how do you zoom? Well, you can get, uh, you can actually purchase a multi-touch touchpad for only about $15, if you can believe it. It's a USB touchpad, and you've got USB on your Rico Magic device. So you plug it in there for 15 bucks, it gives you a touchpad, and you can do multi-touch gestures, including, of course, pinch zoom. If you don't have that, because Roy mentions that he's, o he's only got a mouse, I'm gonna bring up a Rico Magic device here I think what is actually happening is you're going to your USB flash drive, which is cool, and you're able to get those photos up on the screen. Um, so then you're opening it with gallery because you're not too sure which one to open it with, which is fine. But then if you double click on the photo, let's bring up one of the photos that I took uh, just a couple weeks ago. If you double click, it zooms in and double click again it's going to zoom right out. And for those who are just joining us, the device that we're talking about is the mini PC. And again, you can go back over linuxtechshow.com to see that. If I double click, it zooms in all the way <laughs> and it zooms out all the way, but there's no in between. There's no happy medium here, Roy. So I see what you're saying. And that could be a real problem when you're trying to work with a photograph. Rachel, you're an artist, so you know it would be really ideal to be able to control your zoom levels and be able to get as far in as you want. So instead what I'm going to do here, Roy, I'm going to open it with the Media Center app, okay? We're not going to open it with Gallery, and I'm going to show you why we're going to do that. Because now that I've got this photo on the screen, look what I have down in the bottom right-hand side. If you move your mouse down here, because we only have a mouse to work with, I've got a zoom in, which allows me to do step zoom. I can actually just get right in there, or I can I can go anywhere in between. So just by changing apps, because remember this is an Android device, right? So I can I can change the way things work by just changing which app I'm using. So here all I've done is I've said, no, I'm not going to use Gallery to open the photo. I'm going to use the eMedia Center app. So as simple as that, boom. And uh, now I've got the ability to zoom without having to purchase any additional hardware, without having to worry about the fact that my mouse doesn't have multi-touch. And eventually, maybe you'll want to add something like a multi-touch touchpad or something like that. It would just add that extra functionality, and then it would work in everything. For example, Angry Birds, because you've got to be able to pinch zoom in Angry Birds, right? That's, that's important stuff. <laughs> important stuff. If you've got it on a 52-inch screen, you've got to be able to pinch zoom your Angry Birds. Plain and simple. Right? That's why everyone buys these things. Yeah, I'm sure that's yeah. why everyone tuned in this week, too. But how? My Angry Birds. <laughs> I can't work it. <laughs> They're just all zoomed in or zoomed out. <laughs> I can't get in between. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So we have one from Thanks, Retro Ryan. Looking Glass. All right, Retro Looking Glass. It says, hello, I've set up a computer for my grandmother for the first time, and it is using Linux. Yes! She is having some issues using it. She's never had a computer before or even really looked at one. I was wondering if y'all had some advice for first-time users of Linux. Hmm. I set her up on Linux Mint 13, and she's having trouble getting used to different mouse clicks, nag navigating windows, and other such things. If y'all could, at some point, maybe upload videos. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of what we do. We do the videos and the uploads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happy to. You know what? I'm sorry, who does this? Retro, retro, retro looking, looking glass. glass. First of all, yeah. really nice to have you here. 
thank you for uh, sending in the question. We'd love to be able to help uh, you and your grandma to be able to, uh, to, to do this. Um, I don't know if watching the show is something that she'd be willing to do. Um, I know that's a bit of a time commitment, but maybe if you send in specific questions or issues or is, you know, if she has specific things that she wants to learn, um, then send those in to us and we'll, we'll put those in linuxtechshow.com for you so that they follow as a part of our beginner series or something like that. Linux is simply an operating system for your computer, and kudos to you for trying it and for being willing to, to give a go to something different. I think that for a, a grandparent, for somebody who is never, you know, is not very experienced with computers, for example, Linux is a great place to be because you don't have that it's got to be like Windows mentality because you don't, you, 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 not, you don't really care what it op operates like. You just want it to work. The nice thing about Linux is you don't have to worry about the viruses and the pop-ups and the malware and all the scams and all that junk that happens on Windows uh, like you do on, on a Windows operating system. So it just makes it a lot easier for you. Uh, watch some of our stuff on, um, on phishing scams at linuxtechshow.com. That's important for you because I want to protect you from those kinds of things. People can trick you into giving their credit, your credit card number and, and things like that. So I want to protect you from that. As far as actually using Linux, really, you know what, you, the grandson, uh, it would be a good idea just to set it up as easy as possible. And, and I've done this for, uh, for a wonderful man who came into a same situation, and we've talked about him on the show before. He was 84 years old when he came to me, and he, he had a laptop that was Microsoft Windows Vista. And it was terrible, and it was out of the box, came with all this junk that the hardware manufacturer had put on there like trial versions of antivirus and trial versions of word and trial versions of this and that constantly bombarded with junk we put linux on it and we put um, awn uh, dock bar at the bottom which just made it kind of like a mac layout and then we i just put all of the main applications i, I renamed firefox internet i renamed thunderbird email and I set it up for him in such a way that you know all the icons were stretched to be really big because that's one of the things you can do on Linux. It's really nice. Drag the corners of it, right click on it, and go resize, and you can drag the corners, make it big, make it easier easier to see. And then you can rename everything just to make it really really simple. And uh, you know that's that's the way to get things started. And uh, and just I guess be there for her and help her to to. She doesn't have to understand the inner workings of it. Just how to get to the point where she can email you or email her other grandchildren or family members. I think that's an important thing, communication, right? So um, get her to, to understand how to create a new email, how to put an address in the address bar, maybe help her by filling in her contact list so that she can just type in, you know, What's this guy's name? It's, uh, you know, something crazy? Retro. <laughs> retro looking glass? Yeah. <laughs> so type in retro looking glass and it will get to you, whatever your real name is, right? So just make it easy for her and, then, uh, and that will help to ease that transition to, to using the computer. And the easier we can make using the computer for a novice computer user, the more likely they are to use it and to get familiar with it. And, you know, there are times when it's like, I would just love to be able to receive an email from, from grandpa or something. You know, it's just, that's a really, really cool thing uh, and really great way for people to stay in touch. Um, and then just understanding how to use the internet and, and how to, you know, use Google or whatever search engine you want to set her up with. So, but send us your specific questions. We'd love to uh, help, but good starting point, linuxtechshow.com takes you over to our YouTube channel. Look at some of the, uh, the stuff there that is for beginners and uh, that would be a great starting point for you. Keep in mind when you go there, make sure you subscribe. It's a YouTube channel, and uh, it, we just started it up, quite literally. It's only been a few weeks, so there are a, a small amount of videos there, but it's growing because every week we add more. So keep that in mind that you'll want to check back a few times so, and on a regular basis. So thank you very much for the question, and kudos for switching grandma to Linux. Very good. <laughs> Alrighty, so I guess we're getting shorter on time, but you still have some questions. Do you want to do any more? Do oh, yeah. Yeah, we got time. Alrighty, so this one says, Hello, Cat5. I recently viewed your YouTube hey. video on Wirecast from last April. All right. Of all the videos I've seen on Wirecast, yours was the most helpful and informative. You know what? I appreciate you leaving that in. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so thank you. I have a couple <laughs> questions, though. 
One, you put your cameras on separate USB cards, even though the cards are USB 3.0. Yes. I take it the cameras themselves are 2.0. If the cameras were 3.0, yes. would one 3.0 card be able to handle all of them at one time? And that's his first question. Yes and no. Well, here's the thing is that as soon as you put multiple devices onto any USB bus, it splits it in two for two devices. It splits it in three for three devices. So if you've got a USB 3 card, yeah, that does really good speeds. But as soon as you plug four cameras that are HD 1080p into that, traveling at a zip-zabbity 480 megabits a second, I don't know, uh, you run the risk of oversaturating that bus. And then what happens with webcams? They turn off and you completely lose signal. So that's a problem. So to avoid that, not that that would happen because we know USB 3.0 is able to handle a lot more, but I am opposed to putting too many things on any bus. Children, for example. No, we're not talking about that kind of bus. We're talking about a, a USB bus, the card that you put, put in your computer. So I didn't plug any of those cameras into the computer itself. I plug them into a PCI Express card, and I put three of them, one for each camera. And that's so that... That's not because the ca card couldn't handle more than one. It's so that each camera had its own separate, individual, dedicated bus. So that means it had its own PCI Express port, it had its own USB 3 port, and it was not going to be oversaturated by any means. There was a lot of empty overhead, a lot of room for even more power. So, yeah, that's, that's why I did that. Better safe than sorry. They're 12 bucks a card, so why not, right? There's more to it? Yes. All right. He has a second question. I noticed that one of your cameras, I believe it's your backstage pass camera, mm. is mounted on a standard four-foot tripod. Is that a live cam also? If not, is a live no. cam able to be mounted on a four-foot tripod? If you're watching, if you see backstage pass, this is the camera that you're talking about. This is the old backstage pass camera that I'm touching right now. That is a Sony Handycam because it has Firewire and it has every kind of output, USB, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, the quality is not what it is from an HD camera, but it is, it was a cheap solution at the time, but it's a big honking camera. Let me just grab over here. Uh, that's a Microsoft Life Cam. And you see that, yes, this indeed does have a threading for a tripod. So that's brilliant. This is the Life Cam Studio. You can get one at cat5.tv slash cam, C-A-M. And the reason, you know, one of the reasons I love this so much is the fact that it does have a threading. It can sit on a tripod. You can put it on, sometimes I use just those little tiny tripods and I set it on a desk and it works as a kind of a desktop webcam. Or it has this flexible kind of grip that it can grip onto your monitor. And they're 1080p. And they're cheap. I mean, go to cat5.tv slash cam, and you'll see that for a uh, 1080p camera, it's dirt cheap. So, can't beat it. And it works in Linux. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and being at his house, I'm <laughs> always looking everywhere for these hidden cameras on the ceiling and Yeah, stuff. like Microsoft Life Cams Never everywhere. Never knowing you're being spied on. Always. Alrighty. Very important question from Chris Reich. Hey, Chris Reich. Says, Please ask Robbie how Commander Tom is. Commander Tom is doing really good. He's over there. He's swimming near the surface right now. And you can see the water's clean. Yeah, always clean. He smells all the time, though. He's, like, <laughs> stinkier than me. I, I tell you, like, these fish, I mean, they, they sure, generate sure, a lot of stink. Sure, sure, blame the stink on the fish. <laughs> It's got to be the food. It's got to be something. It's the fish. <laughs> he is belly down, Chris Reich. Yeah. No, he's doing good. He's doing good. I don't know. You can't really see him. Heather's just going over to take a shot of him. <laughs> but he's there on the uh, on the fireplace mantle. So, yeah, he's a happy boy. Place of honor. Yeah. <laughs> all righty. Any more time for questions? He appreciates your fan mail, too. You know, I think mail. that's all the time that we have for, for tonight. But yeah, uh, you'll have to catch the rest of them another time. <laughs> Yes. A lot of questions this week. Well, the mailbag is just filling up. We love receiving your questions. It's live at Category5.tv to send those in to us. And uh, thank you so much for sending them in. We do our best to keep up with them uh, over the next couple of weeks. You'll notice that we've left some space in the calendar, and that's because we want to fill in uh, with a lot of the viewer questions that are kind of pending answers. So thank you so much. Rachel, good to see you as always. Yep. Nice to be here again and see all these new people in the chat yeah. room and everything. Right. A lot of new viewers. We've got new viewers week. on firstrun.tv this week. We've got new viewers on YouTube, of course. Subscribe to our channels. 
where else? Blip TV. Thank you so much for joining us. Blip TV. Blip TV. Blip. Blip. I can't even make the sound. I want to call them like. Blip. Sounds like they're Blip. censoring their real name. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Blip TV. This is a family show. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can find us all the time, 24-7, Category5.tv. If you can't catch us live, you can catch us there on demand. You can use those cool features that allow you to zoom into particular portions of the uh, episode. How cool is that? Category5.tv. So have a great week. Swiss Andy, thanks for joining us tonight. Drumstick, A. Jameson. Who else we got? DNLS. Garby. Abby, Abby, Abby. Boo. There's just so many of you. I know I can never never get to the bottom of the list, but... Dennis Kelly, nice to see you. Dave Maydu, fantastic seeing you. G-Pop7, good guy. Eric Andrews, thanks everybody. Hey, Miles from TJ, have a great week. And uh, you at home, make sure you tune in again next week. Have a good one, and thanks for joining us tonight. See ya. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local show times in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.